So today we're going to talk about messiness, okay? It's just going to be yucky today. And then next week we're going to talk about vision. So yuckiness today, vision next week. Because the reality is, is that when my life is a mess, when my church is a mess, I've got to have some vision. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that if there's no vision, we cast off restraint, we go asunder, we get lost, we mess up, okay? So vision is key and we're going to talk uh, about that. We're also going to talk about how do we move beyond the mess, okay? How do we move beyond the mess? And we're going to call it the threshold of scary. And what does the threshold of scary look like? Because there's a threshold of door. When you come into different places, there's a threshold, correct? And so some of us get stuck in the mess. And so we're going to get uber practical uh, in the next few weeks. And then I think I'm realizing this through my own therapy that I'm going through, my own counseling. Uh, But we do a bad job of grieving well. And we do a bad job of recognizing when there are necessary endings within our life. And so even recently, my wife has these roses, and she likes to kind of prune the roses, you know, kind of way up. And I'm like, girlfriend, you got to get in there with the roses. She's going to kind of cut too much off. I'm like, no, roses need a good pruning. And can I just say, I think there's some of us that need a good pruning in our life, relationships, friends, you know, gossipers, a good pruning, and there's necessary endings. We're going to talk about that. And then, yes, my girlfriend, my wife, is going to come up, uh, Pastor Danielle, in the next few weeks and talk about how do we walk in grace and truth at the same time. And it's something that she's been studying. And didn't she do a fantastic job on Mother's Day? I mean, the yoke, correct? When we misbehave as a family, she comes out with the yoke. She goes, you ready for it? I'm about to yoke you, boyfriend, right there. And uh, so if you missed that, you got to jump online and look at it. Today's scripture uh, is going to come out of the message translation. And uh, I enjoy the message once in a while because it's messy. And it's like modern. And and so the Fusion Bibles, the NIV, maybe you use the New King James Version. Maybe you use the NLT, the New Living Translation. Today we're going to look at the message. And so you want to download the Fusion app because that's going to have all the notes. Hit message notes on the Fusion app. Uh, once you've downloaded it, and then you can head to fusionchurch.cc slash app and uh, go ahead and uh, grab it over there. But Romans chapter 7 tells us the following in verse 14. It says, I can anticipate the response that is coming. Now, this is Paul speaking to the Christians in Rome, and it was messy. They were under the leadership of Caesar. They were Jews becoming Christ followers. They were Romans becoming Christ followers. So this is all messy. And Paul, who is Saul in the New Testament, a murderer, is now a Christ follower. And he goes, my life's a hot mess. So let's talk about it. So he says, I can anticipate the response that is coming. I know that all God's commands are spiritual. Let's read this together. But I'm not. Greatest writer in the New Testament says... I got a problem. I'm a little messy. He goes on to say uh, the following. He says, listen, he goes, I know that I'm not. And he says the following. He says, "Uh, isn't this also your experience? Yes, I'm full of myself. After all, I've spent a long time in sin's prison. What I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another. Anyone been there before? Okay, I act another. I decide one way, but then I act another. Doing things I absolutely despise. So if I can't be trusted to figure out what is best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command, God's command is necessary. But then he goes on. He says, but I need something more. I'm not happy with where the mess of my life is. He goes on to say, for if I know the law, but still can't keep it. And the power of sin within me keeps on, I love this word, keeps on sabotaging my best intentions. I obviously need help. When I read that, I'm like, that's me. I need help. I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, think it, but I can't do it. I I, I decide to do good but I really don't do it. If he was writing in modern day English, he would go, I would do bad all by myself. Like, I don't need no compadres. I don't need no friends. I can do it. He goes, I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. Like, serious? I am a mess, is what he's saying. He goes on to say, he says, my decisions such as these 
don't result in actions. Have you ever been there as a Christ follower? Look, I'm trying my hardest. And my flesh, my body, my brain, my emotions, my junk in my past keeps on hijacking me over and over. He goes, something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. That's why we have freedom ministry here. Like this is biblical. We do freedom ministry because there's something in us deep inside of us that keeps on taking us back to the vomit as the book of Proverbs says. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. Let's just sit in there for a moment. Like, yeah, my life is high, my life is down. My life is this, my life is that. He goes on to say, the moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. And I truly delight in God's commands. Like it's this yes and, correct? Yes, I want to pursue all of God, but oh my, my life is a mess. But it's pretty obvious, he says, but it's pretty, pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Part of me covertly rebels just when I least expect it to take charge. I've tried everything. And what does he say? Nothing helps. He says, I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one that can do anything for me? And he says, isn't that the real question? And then he says this, and I love this, the answer, the answer, thank God. Thank God that Jesus Christ can. If there was a subtitle to today's message, Jesus Christ can. Let's say that together. Jesus Christ, All right, pretty good, let's try again. Jesus Christ can. Yeah, I can do bad all by myself, but Jesus Christ can save me. Jesus Christ can set me free. Jesus Christ can heal me. Jesus Christ can deliver me. And that's the faith. Come on, church. That's the faith that we need to stir up today. Okay? That's the faith. Wherever you're listening, you need to stir up. Jesus Christ can. Jesus Christ can. Maybe that's a new band. i got to have three bands on me, correct? The next one is Jesus Christ can. Easter was the greatest hope dealer is Jesus, correct? Jesus Christ can. It goes on to say, he, and he does. It says, he acted to set things right in this life of contradictions. Yes, the yes end of what we're living. Where I want to serve God with all of my heart and all of my mind. But he says, but I am being pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. Are you there with me? Like, I want to love my kids, but then they drive me crazy. I want to love my bride and be obsessed with her, but she drives me crazy sometimes. And we, yes, hi, my name is Brendan. I'm a pastor. And we have elevated discussions in our marriage. Anybody else, correct? There are times she doesn't like me and I don't like her, but guess what? We're trying to figure this whole Jesus thing out because Jesus Christ can. Jesus Christ can. So my messy life and my messy church. Here's the reality, correct? So we read all of it. Again, Romans chapter 7. That's homework. Again, get it in the app. Go study it. Look at it at different translations. I love the message translation because it gives me the realness of Paul. Like he's like, yo, <laughs> like I'm not doing what I should be doing and I'm doing what I shouldn't be doing. I need help. Jesus Christ can. Jesus Christ can. So uh, in, in psychological settings, they'll talk about something called the idealized image. Okay, and the idealized image uh, was kind of Karen Horanez, a psychologist, brought it about in the kind of 30s and 40s. But the idealized image is this, and very important as we dig into this messy life, messy church series, a personal standard of perfection against, okay, competing against which one's actual thinking, behavior, and appearance are compared. And then this is important. An exaggerated and unrealistic view of one's virtues and abilities. So you're like, Pastor, like, talk to me in like normal person terms, okay? This is Disney right over here. Now, if you love Disney, don't hate on me right now. But Disney is an idealized image. I often tell my bride, baby, this ain't Disney. Okay, there's no princess and no castle and no fireworks at the end of the night. Like this is reality. And we, we, we talk about that back and forth. But, but, in, uh, but, but in Disney, the trash doesn't overflow. What happens is it goes down into a trash collection system where little minions pick it up and carry it off, correct? And when, when I walk around my life sometimes, I have overflowing trash. And like no one's taking out my trash except myself. And so the idealized image can set us up for failure in marriage, failure in relationships, and failure in church. Because we have an expectation that everything is perfect, and the reality is 
Number one today, we're going to recognize life is messy. Let's say it together. Life is messy. We've got to recognize, have self-awareness that my life is a messy life. The Bible tells me over and over, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us. The Bible says sin is sin, correct? And so your junk is as bad as my junk. But what we like to do in church is go, oh, they're bad, but eh, you're not that bad. No, we're all bad outside of Jesus can. Jesus can forgive me of my sin. Jesus can set me free. Jesus can heal me. And the rest of you, you're an idealized image, correct? You will eventually disappoint, betray, and reject because that's the sin that Paul talks about within his life. So we've got to recognize that life was messy. And when I study the Bible, I don't see perfection. The only perfection that I see is Jesus, okay? Uh, I see that, and, and we might have some names that you don't know, but it's all right. Uh, we see in the Old Testament, Joseph was abused, sold into slavery, and rejected by his family. Job was bankrupt, told to reject God, lost his family, and lost everything, ended up digging out the sores in his flesh with a piece of stone. Gideon in the Old Testament was afraid and didn't want to listen to God. Moses in the Old Testament had a speech impediment and yet led Israel out of Egypt and into the promised land. Rahab in the Old Testament was a prostitute and yet God used her and we talk about her in the hall of fame in the book of Hebrews. David was a man after God's own heart but was also an adulterer and a murderer. The man that wrote most of the Psalms was an adulterer and a murderer. His life was messy and his kingdom was messy. His family was messy. Uh, Jonah in the Old Testament was a coward. God told him, go to Nineveh, and he went the opposite direction. The scripture says a large fish swallowed him up, puked him up. That's nasty right there, okay? He was smelly at that moment. And he goes to Nineveh upset with what God wanted him to do. Have you ever been there before? Revival happens in Nineveh. I preach this to our staff all the time. Revival is happening at our church, and some of you are sitting like grumpy old people on the side of the road. Jonah, revival, hundreds of thousands of people, even the animals are fasting and coming to Jesus, and Jonah's sitting out of the city gates underneath a tree complaining about his life. Listen, he was a coward, and yet God used him in a messy world, in a messy community, and a messy city. Uh, Noah was a drunk. Drunk. In fact, he was so naked, he got so drunk and so naked, his sons needed to reverse in. That's a bad scene right there, correct? Like, it's X-rated right there. They're like, you're nasty, and i got to reverse myself into you and put something over you, okay? Peter, in the New Testament, was a liar. Yet Jesus built his church on Peter. Abraham was old in the scripture, and yet God used him. Jonah ran away from God in the scripture. Paul, who we talked about in Romans, was a murderer. Timothy was too young, and no one respected him. Thomas was a doubter, didn't even believe Jesus. And you wonder if God can't use you? Are you kidding me? God can use you in your mess and in the mess of his local church. Because his local church is messy. Listen, I've been to maybe thousands of churches on different continents, different cultural ethnicities, different countries, different states, and different counties. And I'm yet to find a perfect church. If you find the perfect church, send me to it because I'd love to check it out. Because the moment I, Brendan, get to the perfect church, it's imperfect because I'm a mess, correct? Just like you. The reality is for years, I've looked for the perfect church. Let me look at that pastor. What Bible does he use? It's orange? Yeah. Even better. It's the NIV. I heard that was bad. Listen, I study the Greek and the Hebrew. I can look at every bit of scripture we have here and show you the different translations. I've gone into churches and looked at their music. Hmm, how's that music? Is it good? Is it average? I've checked the children's ministry out. I've looked at the pastor's wife and checked her out. Hmm, is she crazy or not? How are those pastor's kids, wild or not? I've judged the coffee. Is it smooth or bitter? I've looked at the parking lot attendants. Are they doing their job or are they slacking out there? I've checked how people park in the parking lot. God help us at Fusion Church. 
I've checked the children's ministry out and smelt the classrooms. I've also recognized, is it too hot in the worship center like someone always complains, or is it too cold like the person next to them complains? And yet I've realized these days in modern vehicles, they give us air conditioning on one side and heat on the other side. So my marriage has found freedom because of that. Anyone else amen to that? Recently, my son told me, he said, Dad, I love it in the back seat. I put the air conditioner because it's a dual zone system, correct? He says, I put the air conditioner on full and the heating system on full at the same time. The, heat, the, the seat heats. I'm like, you're a sick kid right there. I'm serious? And so here's the reality, correct? We have an idealistic image in our mind of the way life is and life is messy. Relationships are messy. In fact, Scripture tells us uh, in the book of Psalm, uh, again, David, Psalm chapter 11 says, again, out of the message, Now, God, don't hold out on me. Don't hold back your passion, your love and truth. That's what Pastor Danielle is going to preach about in a few weeks, your love and truth, grace and truth. How do we balance that, correct? Uh, are all that keeps me together, not those relationships, not that money, not that new job, not that new house, no, your love and truth keep me together because I'm a hot mess. It goes on to say, uh, when troubles, when troubles ganged up on me, a mob of sin, past counting, like I've got too much to count. I was so swamped by guilt that some of us today swamped by guilt. I couldn't see my way clear. More guilt in my heart than hair on my head. So heavy was guilt that my heart gave out. How many of us are there in a marriage, with a child, in a job, in the pain of a relationship? Pain of the past, my heart gave out. My greatest cry today is that your heart would not give out, correct? And that this would be a place of healing and a place of respite. Not the building and not the people, but the presence of God. That God would use us broken people, maybe on our prayer team at the end of service, or maybe at our next steps or new here uh, in the foyer at Cumberland and in the foyer over here or online. A place that your heart would not give out, but only God can save you. Jesus can. Remember what Paul said to the Romans, the Christian Romans, Jesus can. He goes, and and David goes, and me, and me, an adulterer, and me, I'm a mess. Let's read it together. I'm a mess. I'm a mess. I'm nothing and have nothing. This is King David. This is a man after God's own heart, okay? I'm not, I'm not talking about a pervasive negative self-image, okay? I'm not talking about a chronic mental disorder. I'm just simply saying we've got to come to a place where we rip down the idealized self-image of what we think things should be and go, hey, here's the reality. I am nothing and I have nothing outside of Jesus because Jesus can. Amen to that? Jesus says, let's read together, make something of me. Make something. David says, make God, God, make something of me. He goes on to say, he says, you can do it. You can do it, God. Like imagine, he's like, you got it, God, you got it, you got it, you can do it. I'm a hot mess, but you can do it. You've got what it takes, God. God's like, serious? I know I've got what it takes. I don't need the pep talk. But God, don't put it off. I love that. But God, don't put it off. So here's the application, correct? What mess do I need to bring to Jesus today? Let's be vulnerable and let's be honest Listen, I have nothing to hide. I get up here and I go, hi, my name is Brendan. I'm a mess. Hi, my name is Brendan. We're trying to figure things out. I'm not perfect. The other day I saw someone in the grocery store. They took a few, I hadn't shaved for two days. My hair was a little messy. I, I wasn't wearing a jacket like this. And they looked at me, they're like, it's you? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they let me out of the church. You know, it's you? Like, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't shave appropriately and do my hair. It's you, you know? And yes, life is messy and so, so where do we need to, here's maybe application point number two on uh, our first thought, but where do we need to have courage and be vulnerable? Vulnerable. Hi, my name's Brandon. My wife and I see a clinical psychologist to help me with the junk in my brain. Hi, my name's Brandon. And I work out because I like to eat too much. Anyone else? Like, hi, my name is Brendan. I'm still trying to figure out why I get distracted in worship. Hi, my name is Brendan, and I read Deuteronomy, and I'm soaping sometimes, and I'm like, that's crazy. Hi, my name is Brendan, and I've got doubts and disappointments. I'm a mess, but Jesus can. Jesus can. So number two, number one is recognize life is messy. Number two, recognize church is messy. Let's say it together. Recognize church is messy. It's messy. Again, the idealized image, correct? 
is that church should be perfect. Well, only Jesus is perfect. Church, the people of church, will always disappoint us. The body of Christ, the body, will disappoint us. Things will get infected. Our toes will get infected and, t- you know, we'll scratch our nails and we'll begin to bleed. Uh, toothache. Anyone have a toothache before? <laughs> You're like, Jesus, set me free. This thing is wild right here. Okay, so, so we get, we, we, our body is falling apart, but Jesus is the head and Jesus can. And so again, idealized image is a personal standard of perfection against which one's actual thinking or behavior and appearance are compared. And then this, an exaggerated, how many of us with the church, I'm not just talking fusion, I'm just talking church, have an exaggerated and unrealistic view. That's why many times we'll do video messages because in a priestly culture that we live in, in the society, we want a priest. You look at Moses and the Israelites. The Israelites were allowed to come up to the mountain and they were like, hold up, Moses, time out. You go up to God and we'll hang tight. You get the word from God and you come back down and de- deliver it to us. And what did they do? Aaron started leading them in a rebellion, correct? And so we live in a culture where it's like, hey, you go and do your thing and come back to us. And, and so here at Fusion Church, like we do not do idol worship. We do not worship the pastor. We do not worship the logo. We don't worship the style. I will rip that down in a hot second. Because at the end of the day, we worship Jesus. That's what we do at this church. The Bible is central, whether we like it or not. It is a mess. Look at all those people. I'm like, they were a hot mess. And yet God used them. God wants to use you. God wants to use me. But we've got to be humble. And here it is, correct? Here's the thought. We need to be a mess together a mess together like if we're not a mess together if we don't have a sense of humility then we can't be helped at the end of the day in regards to that and so that we've got we got to hold that idealized self-image and go hey this is not disney uh the, the garbage doesn't go down and get carried away no it overflows and so in my house sometimes I walk by, and, and um, I don't know about you, but, but sometimes my kids are like, they shove the garbage down instead of taking it out. Okay, now I know now your kids are all perfect. And so what I will do uh, is some of the, that's their chores, but once in a while I'll, I'll like, forget about it. And I pull the garbage up, but because it's been shoved down so much, someone hang in, this is your breakthrough right here. Okay, I pull it out, and what happens is it begins to overflow in the midst of the pulling out. And so sometimes in messy life and messy church, it gets messier before it gets better. Okay, um, it's, it's springtime, and so we got bugs running around the house, and we got mice. They want to get into the garage and the shed. And so I'm researching, and I can buy these um, hypersonic things, correct? You plug them in, and it gives this hypersonic sound that doesn't affect your pet, but it affects mice and lizards and roaches. I'm like, I don't know how that works, okay? And, uh, and so I read the Amazon reviews, and it's like all good reviews, you know, good reviews, good reviews. And then it says the one thing. It says, but you need to understand in the first week of using it, it could get worse before it gets better. And I wanted to tell my wife, baby, you might see a whole lot of bugs in the next week, but it's going to get better. I promise. Correct. And so like we shove the garbage down and I want to say, no, 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 no. You need to let it, let it overflow just a little bit. And so some of us are acting like a trash compactor. You ever see those cool garbage cans where it just pushes it down, pushes it down, pushes it down, pushes it down. And some of us, we're just like, I'm good. I'm amazing. I'm up and to the right. Did you see my Instagram? We're having so much fun. And I'm like, no, you're not. I know your story. I know you're a wreck. I know you're a disaster. You're like, it's amazing. It's so good. Correct? Like, I've got those Instagram pictures. I, and, and the joke in my family is the Christmas pictures. We talk about that all the time. Everyone's like, Pastor, that was the best Christmas picture ever. I'm like, yeah, you didn't see what happened to the kids five minutes before that. <laughs> you definitely didn't see what happened to the kids after that. I mean, one from like five or six years ago, my wife has like lollipops in every single one of her knuckles behind her back. 
Like it's either you're going to get slayed, child, or you're getting a lollipop shoved in your mouth. And everyone comes up, it's amazing. Best pictures ever. And I'm like, oh, no, it wasn't. It was shove that trash down. But at some point, and press in for this, okay? At some point, that trash compact is going to break. At some point, it's going to break. Because you, you can't keep on shoving it down. At some point, you got to unpack the garbage, okay? you got to pull it out. So there's got to be much grace and much truth, much grace and much truth in this journey. And then again, that's what, that's what Pastor Danielle is going to talk about in the next few weeks. It is much grace, so we're going to, we're going to get there, correct? Much grace. I've got to hold grace. And I, with the junk in my life, I've got to encounter God through worship. I've got to encounter God through uh, soaping. I've got to encounter God through groups, okay? So that's why I'm such a massive believer in getting out of rows and getting into circles. In fact, my freedom group this um, semester was wild, wild, because we, we just literally doot, 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 backed up the truck and dumped the junk. And I mean, there were times I sat there like, ah. Oh. Okay, God, we're on a road here. Because, and, and why? Because men, all of a sudden, we're like, no, there's safety, there's freedom, and there's security to be able to back up the truck and be able to dump it. In fact, uh, Paul, speaking to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians 6, 13, out of the Passion Translation, says, so I speak to you as children, and then he says this, make room in your hearts for us as we have done for you. Well, what I'm asking in regards to messy church, is the church is not perfect because we're not perfect. But when I can make room for what God is doing, when I can sometimes understand, mm, there's going to be a little bit more bugs running around this place because we're focusing on health as a church. We're focusing on Jesus as a church. We're focusing on the presence of God and not all, everyone always likes that. And we got to go, no, 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 no. We need to get that hypersonic little bug zapper in the wall so that we can get healthier. And then here's number three, is that Jesus heals all of it. Jesus heals all of it. Come on, say it together. Jesus heals all of it. Paul talking to the church at Rome said, listen, Jesus can. And over every continent, and every country and every church of different ethnicity and culture and economic standards. I've gone into some churches with pastors with multiple theological uh, degrees. I've gone to churches where it's Dr. So-and-so and apostolic so-and-so. And I've gone to churches where the pastor had no degree and just action orientated. And went into some church that had a massive choir and one church that had no choir. And went into one church that was all about outreach and another church. And at the end of the day, I ask the question, is Jesus central to this church? Is Jesus the one that can heal the people, or is it the pastor that thinks he can heal? Is it the uh, person uh, with a special ministry that, that can heal? Who is it? Is it Jesus that can heal? Because, again, Paul says to the, this group of Romans that's under incredible pressure, he goes, listen, the answer is, thank God that Jesus can and does Jesus can, can, and does. He can come in and heal my messy life. He can come in and deliver me. He can come and give me strength, even though my situation and my circumstance doesn't change. He can, and He does. It says Jesus acted to set things right in this life of contradictions. Isn't the life we live of contradictions? Yes, and where I want to serve God with my whole heart and mind, and I am pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. It's messy. Jesus can and does. Problem is, and I was saying this in the first service, and I just really felt this was a, this was a prophetic illustration for, for some, some one of us. Jesus can and does. The problem is that you have pushed your garbage down 
and then the little garbage can in your house got overused and so you put it out in the dumpster and now you're in the dumpster trying to push it out. And Jesus is the garbage truck driver and he drives up, boop, 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 and he wants to lift the garbage container and dump it, correct? And you're like, I'm good. I'm good, everybody. Doesn't my Instagram look amazing? It's good. I just came back from Disney. It's awesome. It's good. And Jesus is waiting and everyone can see you and you stink and you smell and you're dirty and you're nasty and you just keep on trying to get that thing garbage down. And you're like, I'm good. I'm good. And Jesus is waiting to dump your garbage. And you're like, and you come into church, you're like, it's amazing, guys. Woo! It's so good. And I look at your life and the Spirit of God tells me that your life is a mess. And you're like, I'm good, Pastor. I'm good. I'm good. And I can keep on doing this because I CrossFit every day. Okay? So, I'm good. I'm good. You're not good. I'm not good. There are days I beg people to pray with me. There are days I just sit in the presence of God and say, God, I'm caught in contradictions. There are days I feel insecure and go, Lord, what on earth are you doing? I'm a mess. I'm a mess. Just as David, a man after God's own heart said. And so this series, would you press in? Would you go, yes, and yes, I want to pursue God and, and I'm a wreck. So here's the question, correct? What messy part of you, what messy part of church, church hurt, I'm telling you, church hurt and bitterness is destroying the kingdom of God right now. I'm destroying the sheep that are hurt and lost and wounded. I'm grieved. So what messy part of you and what messy part of church do you need to bring and lay at the feet of Jesus today? Or do we go, I'm good. I'm good. So come on, let's stand. We're going to go back into a moment of worship at all of our locations, but application point number one, what is the Holy Spirit saying? And the Spirit of God is speaking. So unless you're a dream teamer that needs to go out to do something, let's just hang tight for just a few minutes because God is working and I can see it in the faces of those that I'm looking at. So what is a prayer team? Come up right now. Prayer team, start coming up. Prayer team and Cumberland, go up. What is the Holy Spirit saying? Let's not move until God speaks to us. Come on, guys. Come up here. Let's go. What is the best next step? Number two, what is the best next step today and this week? Or are you just going to wait for Jesus to drive up in his big truck and get ready to dump? And you're just going to go, I'm good, Jesus. I'm good. It's all under control when it's not. We're just going to keep on pressing it down. And so we're going to unpack that in the next weeks. And God's going to supernaturally change your life and supernaturally change the lives of those that you bring in the next few weeks. Let's pray. Father, right now, God, would you come in this next moment? Would you touch us? In this next moment, would you fill us? In this next moment, God, at all of our locations, would you just begin to move and touch your people, touch your children in a powerful and a beautiful way. And we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.